Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of Affinity Photo Tutorials. Today we are gonna look at how to replace a sky in a photo. So this is our end result and this is our starting picture. As you can see it's a foggy rainy day and one thing I want to point out before we start to use the technique is it is an easy and fast technique but it only works for some of the pictures. So you want to have a picture where the sky is very uniform, there's not much going on in the sky. The sky has to be foggy, but the background, uh, the foreground should be as clear as possible. And the horizon should be obstructed by other stuff so you don't see it directly. So it gives you the nicest result. Also, you want to have a sky where when you took the picture, the sun was not behind you because otherwise it wouldn't work out because now the sun is in front of you and the shadows would not work with this new sun position. So have a look out for that. Um, I already prepared the picture and I already prepared the sky. I like to have the sky in a higher resolution, which gives me the ability to move it around, rescale it and fit it into the picture where I think it fits best. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to create a mask layer for the sky, which is very easy with Affinity Photo. The only thing we have to do is to click on the selection brush. Make sure that you are on the layer with the sky um, that we want to mask. So just draw this in here very crudely. So you see we have a selection here um, like this. And then we click on refine. And basically Affinity Photo is going to do the work for us. As you can see, it's not perfect yet. Um, we just have to take a brush again inside of the refine selection and select everything um, where the background sky is looking through. There we go. And we give basically Affinity another chance to recalculate the selection. Let's see how this turns out. Takes a little bit, but Affinity Photo is doing a really great job and saving you a lot of time. So you see, it's an almost perfect selection. Maybe go down here a little bit more. Um, there we go. This looks pretty good. We click on apply and then we can STRT, STRG plus D to deselect. No, that was not. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong, sorry. <laughs> we have to click on the mask layer first. So there's the mask layer now, STRG plus D. There we go. And now we click on the layers and pull out the mask layer below the original layer. Because we don't need it for this layer, we need it for the sky layer. Let's click on the sky layer and rename it sky. And then right click on the sky layer and make a duplicate. And then we click and rename it ground because we have a wet road and this means we have a sky reflection in the road. Okay, um, let's press STRG and zero to resize the picture so we see everything and um, activate the sky layer and see where we want to put it. We want to put it roughly. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer again. Sky layer. Um, roughly on the horizon so maybe here is good where it hits the road maybe a bit a bit higher up maybe here looks to be good okay and then we take the ground layer select the ground layer click on arrange and click on flip vertically flip vertically there we go so it's upside down and these green lines guide you so it's really at the same position we just changed the height um, uh, of the location so we connect them down here there we go maybe put it a little bit higher with our arrow keys there we go very nice and now um, let's hide the ground layer again click on the sky layer and then click on the mask layer and push it up onto the sky layer so the mask works for the sky layer and you can see it's a very nice selection already uh, the next thing we want to do is click on the sky layer again and click on multiply. So it is mixing with the background uh, of the picture. 
Okay, the next thing we want to do is um, turn on the ground layer again. And this time we don't set it to multiply, we set it to overlay. So it's a bit more flashy from the color. And we need to create a mask layer for this too. So hide it again and click on the background with our original picture. And then we go again to the selection brush and make it a bit smaller maybe. There we go. And we select a little bit of the wet parts or of the shiny parts of the road. Then we go again into refine. And now we can do it um, more roughly to give it a second chance because the first part is defining what is the background and the second part is giving affinity the chance um, to make a better finer selection. So let's see how this turns out. This looks very good. Maybe try it back here also. Yes, I'm really happy with that. Let's click on apply again and then we click on mask layer again and we pull out the mask layer and we pull it onto the ground layer. There we go. Make the ground layer visible. And now um, STRG plus D to deselect it and I want, let's click the mask layer and we click on layer and invert. So it's not on the on the on these parts, but it is on the darker parts of the road. And um, we will go and click the ground layer and reduce its opacity until we feel, yeah, that looks like a good sort of reflection for the ground. What you see here is something we don't want to have: the coloring on the side in the forest. So we just click on the mask layer and then we click on the paintbrush and give it a give it a good size and a zero hardness. So it's very soft on the edges. Set it to black and then just roughly um, paint out the side areas of the road. So we hide them carefully. There we go. That's good enough. OK, so one thing we need to do now is to create an ambient light layer. Ambient light is the light that is not coming directly from a source, but it's reflective from the ground and the surroundings and picks up the color of the surroundings. Um, so what we want to do is we click on the rectangle tool down here and just draw a rectangle over all of the picture push this up here and um, then we go to the sky layer to the mask right click and say duplicate and then we pull it up to, to the rectangle and now what we do is we click on the mask and say layer invert so everything is um, affected by the ambient light but the sky okay so the next thing we want to do is to, um, do we want to multiply it? Soft light, soft light is better. So um, yes, we put it to soft light and with opacity again, you can adjust um, where you think it's a good um, situation for the, um, for, the, for the ambient light. Maybe it's, Let's say 95% looks kind of okay. And um, to, to set the color of the ambient light, um, you just um, click on the move tool, click on the layer, and then up here you have a fill. And with this, you, can, you have this little circle here. You can drag it into the picture and select a color um, that you like. And then click again on it so it will jump to this color. And now you see the ambient light has changed a little bit. Um, so you can really play around and find a color where you think this looks best. I think this reflection is a bit too hard. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit and click on the mask of the ground 
and take our brush and let's see yes the black color uh, maybe reduce the opacity to make it not too intense make it a bit smaller and uh, let's see let's draw a little bit on here yeah that's uh, that's better okay that's good um another thing that you can do if you want is um, create a new layer uh, pull it up to the top and take the brush again make it a fairly big size um, zoom out of the picture so you have a good overview take the brush again and uh, set it to black of course uh, make the brush even bigger like a really big size really big there we go that's good okay and now what we can do is uh, we just let's see draw a little bit of a circle down here maybe a little bit up here and there okay uh, strg zero again to resize it um, and we can let's see let's let's take hard light looks pretty good what is soft light let's see soft light soft light looks good and again you can set how much of an effect you want to have um, to give it a little bit more because the light of course with the distance to the sky the light is falling off um, so it's getting the reflections getting less intense so you want this element this part in the lower part of the picture a little bit um, darker okay uh, one more thing you can do of course is um, you click here on the adjustment layers and uh, click on curve uh, make sure that this is on the top above all other layers and then you can play around uh, with the settings here and find out what kind of brightness you want to have and even contrast if you pull these in a little bit you see it gives you more contrast and you can make it of course well to your taste let's say to your taste uh, whatever you feel looks good so you can make it really how can I say postcard a little bit cheesy maybe or more natural it's really up to you and to your taste uh, what kind of result you're looking for so that's it um, this is our finished design of course you can play around with all the different elements and find something that suits you best and your taste best everybody's taste is very different some like very intense colors and very dreamy um, skies other people um, like it more softer more natural and of course you can work with the details a lot and put in a lot of things that you want to have there maybe even put in some artificial fog or some artificial shadows and light so there's a lot of possibilities to do different things it's up to your taste experiment don't be afraid of making errors because if you do errors it's really the best way to learn something about your art and about your design and maybe you find some techniques that are even better than doing it correctly doing it the right way okay so that's it and um, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um yeah give me some feedback suggest new other topics that you want to see questions that you have um, about doing things in affinity photo and thanks you for watching please leave a like please subscribe to see um the further episodes that are coming and yeah thank you for being a great audience. See you soon. Goodbye. Have a nice day.